In a moment, you'll see the 3DS Max interface in full screen and you will listen to my voice that will guide you through the lesson. But from time to time, I'll appear in this window again to share some personal considerations with you. Enjoy the course! To access the render settings, click on this icon or use the keyboard shortcut F10. As we've said, Corona Render is designed to work best at its default settings. So all the parameters in the performance tab will never be changed, except in some rare cases that we'll look at in another lesson, where we'll make a few changes to correct some errors. So everything concerning the render controls will be done exclusively in the Scene tab. To begin, let's look at interactive rendering, which is the most convenient way to render during the scene building phase. An interactive render can be launched by clicking on this button in the render setup, or I can start it directly by clicking on this icon in the toolbar. Or lastly, I can open the frame buffer here and then holding down the render button, I can select Start IR. When we are in interactive mode, the rendering of the scene restarts each time we change something. If we move an object, change a material or modify a light, the render is updated. This is precisely the mode that enables us to work on the scene and observe how it changes. We can also enable interactive rendering in the viewport by clicking on the Start Interactive Render in Active Viewport button in the toolbar. In this case, all the post-production command will be accessible from the camera tab of the render setup in the post-production and glow section. However, what we don't have when we are in the viewport are a series of tools and in particular the very useful region render, which is why I personally use the frame buffer more often. When everything is ready and we want to launch the final render, we just click on any of the render buttons without adding any other settings. The progressive render will start following the parameters set in this section. By default, these parameters are all set to zero, which means that the render will continue indefinitely and we will have to stop it when we decide that the level of grindness or noise is low enough. If, on the other hand, we have set a sequence of renders or a batch render, then we are obliged to limit something. We can limit the number of passes, the time or the minimum percentage of noise. With time and experience, you will certainly develop a personal sensitivity towards these parameters, but from the point of view of the Corona software house, it's estimated that in most cases 2% should produce very clean images. Abbiamo parlato We've spoken about the 2% threshold and in a moment I'll mention the 5% threshold. Although these are the values suggested by the manufacturer, I recommend not taking them too literally. Always carry out some tests, visually check that the image is as clean as you want to be, because what often happens is that even with a slightly higher noise level, so in less time, we can get images that are clean enough. Finally, we have an option that enables us to reduce the calculation time and that's the denoiser. The denoiser is an algorithm that reduces the noise in the image in post-production. My suggestion is to always add the denoiser and then evaluate the percentage of it used in the frame buffer. When you're using the denoiser and want to limit the calculation time, the manufacturer recommends a minimum noise level of 5%. If by any chance you forget these values, you can easily find them again by moving the mouse to the noise item in the tab stats of the frame buffer. 
To summarize, we can use interactive rendering while building the scene to carry out all the tests on the lights and materials, and we can launch a render simply by clicking on Render and letting it render until the image looks clean enough. No settings are needed when you proceed this way. In the noise and the noiser lesson, we'll be talking about controlling the noise and we will look at how to regulate our use of the denoiser. I remind you that under each lesson you find the verification questions. Only by answering all correctly the lesson will be marked as complete and once all the lessons have been completed you will download from your area the certification for this module.